Tom here for Lauren Systems and TrueNAS Scale Bluefin 22.12 is released on December 14th of 2022. I have been running the beta version for quite a while and nothing fishy happened. The installs all went swimmingly and I'm really hooked on this new Bluefin version. Also, please leave all of your, well, fish related puns and comments you can come up with with TrueScale uh, down in the comments because I'd really enjoy reading them. In all seriousness, there is a lot of improvements and I have found even when I was doing the beta testing, the release candidate testing on Bluefin, it to be a very stable system. Two things of note, one of them that's still in the production full release here is not fixed, is going to be the virtual machine's ability to talk to the host itself. So if you have the network interface set to what Ever network interface your VM and your TrueNAS is on, they can't talk to each other, not natively without creating a bridge. I find this really odd. I know the solution that someone may comment is create the bridge, but it seems like natively they should talk. And the reason being, maybe you want to serve up some shares from your TrueNAS system and you'd think you want your VMs to be able to access those shares without technically using the network interface, like looping out and looping back in. Uh, so I'm not sure why that's designed the way it is, where you have to create the VM, tie it to a network interface, and then bridge the interfaces together. Seems kind of odd. The second one is your apps didn't start after you upgraded from the old release to the new Bluefin release. There's a fix for that, and I'm going to leave it linked down in there. There's some changes they made, and there's a forum discussion and there's also just a simple command you can run to fix it but that simple command isn't run by default because it does create some security changes and so i'm going to link to the forum post so you can read through and if you want to get a deeper understanding or if you just want to get it fixed you can run this command really quick and it'll get your application starting now as far as big changes we're going to focus on the ui one shortly but let's just kind of run through them real quick here and the first one you're going to notice is going to be the non-root as admin, it's kind of been a joke to me with TrueNAS, like why have a username spot when you always have to log in as root? Well, that's finally fixed. And there's gonna be instructions that they have how to create those non-root admin users. You just really add them to the built-in administrators group, pretty simple, but they've got documentation on that. The tuning and support for all MVME systems. This is important, so that's a new feature that came. API keys with role-based access controls, USB pass-through for virtualization. They already had pass-through for things like video cards, but using the USB pass-through was, well, extra steps. Now it's built into the UI. StoreJ as a cloud provider. I do plan on doing a video on StoreJ. I think it's a really neat service and I just haven't gotten around to really digging into it, but I did get my account set up on there. So I will have more news soon on that, but I think it's really cool, but they're integrated not only as a service you can run as an app, but also as a cloud storage provider. Check them out. It's an interesting uh, way they're integrating storage as a distributed system. Now, storage performance and improvements leaves a really broad piece on the table. I don't know exactly how much faster this is. So I'm going to do some tests where I, well, compare it to core. And that's my benchmarks I did quite a while ago. And it's because it takes a little while to put these benchmarks together. Now that I know that they've specifically noted they've improved the performance, I'm going to build a core machine, do a battery of tests, reload it or upgrade in place to the Angelfish and, I'm sorry, Bluefin not Angelfish and do the difference. I probably won't retest Angelfish compared to Bluefin to see how much those storage performance improvements are, but you can see my old video where I did compare TrueNAS Core and the Angelfish version. But now that it's getting to be a more mature product, it's nice to see that there's going to be some performance enhancements that are coming from there. Now, the thing we're going to drive into next is going to be lots of UI enhancements. That's the part I want to focus on really showing you because that's where I think they just did a great job of kind of rethinking the UI to make it I don't know, nicer, easier to use, puts a lot of information in one place as you tab through it. But rather than me verbally describe it, let's jump into that. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is log in not as root. So we're going to go here and username LTS and then a password I have in there. And we'll show you the current interface, which really hasn't changed much in terms of the dashboard. But there's at least one thing I will comment on here that I'm not completely clear on compared to how it worked in TrueNAS Core with it being BSD based, and that's the ZFS cache. Now there is a forum post about this and it may help shed some light that they're doing some work on this and you may want to change how much ARC is available on there. This has been a little bit of a confusing point because I TrueNAS Core system does use all of the ZFS cache based on 
all the free memory it has. So if the memory is not in use, hey, let's use it for cache. The algorithm seems to be different and there's some limitations by default where it's only using part of the memory that you have available. So there may be some tuning you have in there. I'll leave a link to those forum posts on there, but essentially you're just setting the ZFS max arc size. And as I said, I'm still doing testing on this. This is not something official. This is just discussed in our forums, but you can set that, for example, by saying echo and then set it to sysmodule ZFS parameter ZFS max arc size. Now, if you're just doing it from command line, this will be reverted on reboot. And I'm fine with that for now because I don't reboot it very often. And I don't mind just setting it as needed, but I'm still trying to figure out the ramifications or if there are any problems that are created with that. But the noticeable thing is going to be when you go to arc summary, and let's scroll back up here to the top in here. You can look up your arc summary and you'll see that I've set that max size 50 gigs. So by default, it was only using like half. I think that's all the defaults for Linux. So I went ahead and changed it. So I think I'm doing this properly. I say, I think there's a forum post I'll link to so you can ask some questions. I'll be asking some questions in there in the forum as well to try to get some clarification. But I thought I'd bring it up. It's at least a big change with how this works inside of Linux versus how it worked in BSD, which was completely automatic. I never had to think about it. Now they did make some minor changes to the reporting, which you can get to directly here. They have a nice auto refresh. They've kind of cleaned it up a little bit so we can go and scroll backwards actually we'll go right about here you can see where i was doing some testing on here switching to the networking i did some tests i haven't had any problems with the reporting it actually seems to be a little bit faster more responsive i know if you flip through them before it would kind of hang up uh sometimes but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore uh, but the arc cache thing and the memory cache thing still has me a little bit confused as to what makes it go up and down, which is why I brought that up before I brought you to the memory. Because if you're wondering why these changes are happening, these are sometimes reboots, but it seems to kind of go up and down even when I'm not rebooting it. I'm not 100% clear as to why. Now, where the big changes come are right here in the storage and data sets kind of being separate as opposed to the way it was where it was one menu. With storage, we have where we can manage the drives and the topology of ZFS itself. So we can see the usage, capacity, ZFS health. We can run a scrub, see the disk health, view reports, manage the disk. So you're managing the raw disk right here. And over here, we can manage the devices. So we have a RAID Z1 and we can expand these out, see if there's any error. And for any one of these, you get these menus that come out on the side. So you can get the ZFS info on this particular device offline the device, manage the encryption of the device, info on the device. So you're actually pivoting back and forth between different aspects of the hardware, run manual tests even on the smart drives. I like that all this is consolidated under storage. So you're managing it from the physical to the logical of the way the VDEVs may be set up. And then the data sets itself here, this is now inside once you have the pool your ability to manage each of these data sets. By breaking all this apart, they're able to put a lot of information together in a more consolidated way, I feel. For example, if I click on my LTS video production folder here, I'm able to see that it's a data set file system, standard, the settings, but if I need to change the settings for that data set, I can edit. It has a little slide out menu to change those. By default, they inherit. So you can see inherit on, or I can off for any of the extra data set features. Data, data set space management, if I was doing some quotas, ZFS encryption, who the permissions are. I like being able to see that at a glance. And the data protection right over here. So I can forcibly create a snapshot, but I can also see the total snapshots, snapshot tasks, and then pivot to managing the tasks that are related to it. So there's the tasks related for that particular data set. And these just are really nice enhancements to be able to jump between any of these. And what it's doing is we have period snapshot tasks, and then it's filtering for that period snapshot task name, but then we can actually clear it and see all the snapshot tasks. This kind of back and forth makes it just a lot easier to manage and see like, oh, I clearly don't have any cloud sync tasks that are off-siting this via cloud, but I do know I have maybe a replication task on it. Uh, we should go, click back over here to the video production. There we go. And the same thing, it'll let me take it to that particular replication task, the video production to purple which we can clear and see the other ones, the time computer to back up to purple and sync thing to purple. Now, something I want to note, and we're going to edit this, 
The sync thing to purple, purple is a NAS that I have. I've had for a long time. It's an older, slower one that does run TrueNAS Core. And because it's running TrueNAS Core 13, you are may wondering, well, do you have any replication problems with it? And I don't. The interoperability with replication between core and scale has been great. So I can still maintain core machines or that machine's kind of dedicated to, it just has a bunch of WD purple drives, hence the purple name. And I have them all stacked in there and I'm able to easily replicate to it and I can get the data back and forth. So interoperability when you're doing the ZFS sync hasn't been a problem for uh, doing the replication. So that's one nice thing they've kept compatibility with. Now, scrolling down here, networking looks pretty much the same. Data protection uh, is another consolidated view for seeing all the different tasks and everything in one place, the smart tasks, our sync tasks. So instead of pivoting them from the data set, this is just a different consolidated view so you can see them. But I really, I don't know, I just really like the way they've laid this out. It's been, to me, a lot easier. It is a big change, but a lot easier overall to understand what's going on with any of my storage. Your credentials, local users, and I'll show this, but it's in the instructions link down below and we'll search for LTS. And we'll go ahead and edit that user. All you're doing is going to the auxiliary group when you add a user and choosing the built-in administrators. Also, have an admin user separate than whatever your users are for things like your shares. That still should be done, by the way. Don't just assume that you always should use your admin for the shares. That's not good security practice. Down to virtualization. Now, I haven't had any problems with the virtualization. And as mentioned, and we go here and expand out and edit a VM, you can see the way the edit works on the side here, being able to change things, boot method, UFI. And I haven't done a lot on the VMs in terms of like any videos or tutorials. Those are coming. I'm going to do a dedicated one to how this works um, because it's a little different than some other virtualization, but I think it's nice. It's got a decent UI to it. It's been stable and has actually survived several different updates I've gone through on here. Now, the devices, this is where they added the USB pass-through. So if we go here, USB pass-through, controller type, and you can pick the different things that are plugged into it and pick the device and go from there to be able to add it to your system. I haven't tested this yet. I don't have anything really plugged in to dive in and test it, but at least it's here and they're building it in, which I think is really slick. Now, as far as applications, the only ones I've tested and the only ones I really use in production here is SyncThing and that data, both of them work fine. I've went ahead and done several updates to NextCloud and it hasn't had any problems. I don't use NextCloud much. I don't use it commercially with any of our clients, but I mean, testing it for each update to see if any of the issues cause any breakage. And so far they haven't. As far as available official supported applications from IAC Systems and TrueNAS, um, this is the current list. They've added a few more on the list. Here's your Store J, Plex, MinIO is in here now. QT, BitTorrent is in here. And I think PhotoPrism is new, but the rest of them are, you know, it's kind of a smaller uh, list at the moment. Of note, yes, you can add other catalogs to this. Uh, there are the True Charts catalogs available as well. So that's another third party. So you can have even more application support within here. I haven't dove into it a lot. I've mostly been focusing on testing this with the current catalog that's supported from IAC Systems. Now, while I didn't have any problems with TrueNAS Scale Bluefin, that doesn't mean you won't. But good news it does set up boot environments that you can revert back to. So if you loaded it, had some problems, would like to revert back, you can. You just go activate the previous boot environment. But it is good practice to not upgrade the ZFS features if there were any ZFS features to be upgraded. You'll get a notice on your pool that there's a feature update to apply sometimes when you update both TrueNAS Core or TrueNAS Scale. And if you update to those features and those features are not available in the version you want to roll back to, well, you may not be able to mount your ZFS data set. So that's really important. You don't want to lose the pool. You don't want to lose any data sets or create any weird issues. So don't do the ZFS pool upgrades until you know that are working. Next, Anytime you set up any of the applications in TrueNAS Scale, make sure you understand not only how to install them and where the data should be going, but also understand how to restore them prior to putting data in. I just like to give this out there as a warning because sometimes people get excited, it works, they start using it for data, and then they realize they don't know how to back it up or never did back it up. So go through at least one restore process before you really rely on it for data. That'll save you a lot of trouble and hopefully us a lot of consulting calls when we tell people this is 
kind of broken and it's going to be a lot to recover it. Or maybe sometimes as people have learned, there's not a way to recover it because they thought it was separate from the pool and deleting things wouldn't cause these problems. So I'm just trying to save some people some trouble. Finally, love to hear some of them fish puns. Leave them down below. I like play on words. They're always fun. I think there's something about geek culture and play on words that go hand in hand. So give me your best true NAS scale puns uh, or anything we can come up with around there. I will enjoy reading those. Head over to my forums for more discussion on this or any other topics I talk about on my channel or head over to the IAC Systems forums to engage with the developers there and tell them what you love and what you love and maybe a little bit of what you may not love about true NAS scale. And thank you. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.